Hello mm, and moving on, it's Eileen. Hi, today's Friday, the 25th of September 2020, which is what I tend to enunciate each time I uh, come on to the tube here. I just did a lengthy uh, sort of a running over energy work kind of subject where I went into uh, some detail for some, some, some parts of that process and others uh, less. I'm, uh, I suppose it's basically what I'm trying to do here is also reintroducing all sorts of concepts that I've talked about previously on my channel. Um, some of them I've actually, you know, devoted lengthier uh, videos to or it's a recurring uh, process that I've updated people on um, more or less regularly at one point or another. Um, I'm actually quite warm at the moment, so I'm going to take this vest off. And I will um, just be here for a little longer. Let me see if I can find a hairpin. I thought I had a, yes, I have a hairpin so I can fix this out of the way, potentially. Um, because I left you just now with the notion that there are actually energies inside the earth that are personal to us, okay? So this is like an advanced stage of white light work that I want to go into. Um, I should probably, I have talked about grounding very briefly in my intro to the number one video just now. Um, that's essential. The whole thing about energies being blocks in your earth line, so the line between your basically your root chakra and the heart of the earth beneath your feet that is your earth line if there are energies in there that don't really belong with you you feel less capable of grounding it's a completely vibrational and emotional thing and it is i think to me becoming more and more obvious that i have to uh i i have become a lot more grounded what with all these practices that I've been, you know, doing and uh, I've been taking care of myself, I've been taking care of living also in a way that makes sense to me in this kind of a context. I have to take into account, I can't do everything all at once. I can't, there are certain things I can do and other things I just can't do, right? So let me put my hairpin in. I um, have found that other than... I will get back to the personal energies uh, in the earth chakra or star chakra or in the earth line uh, in a bit. I first want to reintroduce um, a couple more things as to, so uh, grounding yourself is a quite a complex process actually that can have, you can, you can ground things around you. You can ground your aura, which is a really good th good idea to be doing. Um, every kind of um, aspect to your life can be grounded in a manner that's useful or beneficial. It's uh, it is a it is a focus matter. It is a matter of changing the energy nature of involving yourself in the energy nature of things of becoming an active partner, so to speak, in the energy shop in your life, okay? Instead of just letting everything wash over you and <laughs> we don't know what to do, this is how we can actually do and change things to some extent. And then other things happen and, um, you know, you you're up for other challenges again so yeah it never it never takes away the uh the fact that we are being challenged because then you have newer and more interesting challenges that come to you don't i know it i'm going to light me another light leaf of sage here so as to know what i'm doing um like so so here's a half leaf of sage. The grounding properties of different herbs and incenses and resins and leaves and things like that in their smoke are quite interesting also to use. 
I also find that it is something that you can actually work with. In, yeah, I've used Palo, Palo Santo uh, on and off uh, regularly. Here's another good looking chunk of Palo Santo. There's a, a, whole, so, a whole world of, of things that you can use uh, for, for, you know, for these purposes. However, grounding by itself doesn't do that much necessarily other than allow you to reintegrate things. It is absolutely the first step. And the first step to that grounding process would be connecting with your base chakra, with your tailbone. Going, closing your eyes, focusing down on your tailbone and seeing what happens for as long as possible. If you were to only take that away from this whole lengthy tail of mine and practice that and find that pleasant to do and find that, um, you know, that it helps you to regain control, if you like, if that's what you need, or more goodness you know <laughs> whichever kind of goodness it is that you are are striving for uh then i'm happy because there's a lot of this takes years to practice and to develop and it takes a bit of a natural inclination you have to have natural tendencies for yourself inside yourself to work with this kind of thing it takes an immense load of focus and you can use binaural beats to help you and do things. And you can choose to use incenses or whatever. You know, you can go a million miles. It's it's a free world. It's a free free world to, to have um, access. It's good, isn't it, that we have access to so many, so many things. However, the things can never, the Palo Santo, and, and none of it can really replace your personal dedication to the work. And the dedication will grow as you do it, as you form your practice to your own needs, as you integrate uh, self-care and discipline and together, you know, and as you manage whatever it is that's in your life also. Because we have, we don't only live on the inside, we also live on the outside, right? So a lot of, about this series of this this set of two probably hopefully videos is about actually uh the energies that i've encountered and how i dealt with them how i use white light to you know find a way um because that's that's what works for me so i have another sip of water here i want to go into the aura field approach a bit more because i have described this on my channel earlier and i suppose that i've given it that kind of a title there is an exercise an energy a vibrational exercise called the energy of the rose that i have made a video about about a year or so ago maybe maybe a year and a half and it has proven particularly useful for me so i'm going to in a nutshell try to give it to you again here it is, the, the thing is that you sit or stand, even if that's comfortable, uh, connect yourself from your tailbone to the heart of the earth, create an earth line. Your eyes are closed, you're sensing your aura field around you, and then you position the image or the energy or the nature of a rose, at the edge of your aura like that so at arm's length or a bit more away from you why a rose a rose is love it is a very pure vibration of love and actually of what i would call personal sovereign love even it is love between sovereign beings so that with that energy at the edge there what you can do is all the energies that are inside all you have to do is ask for all the energies that are inside the field defined by the rose line like so the out the outward edge of your aura that do not belong to you to go back to where they came from just like that 
You only have to ask. You don't have to feel anything or see anything or be connected to anything or whatever. You just have to ask for the energies to leave. Go back where they came from. And then in a second move, you ask for energies that do belong to you, but that are outside the rose, outside the field of the edge of the field defined by the rose, to go up to a point like here, which is the sun, the personal sun chakra uh, sitting at about this somewhere uh, over your head. And that's where they go. They do not go back to you directly. They do not come into your aura because then they bring all sorts of weird stuff with them. They go up there where they are neutralized and the energy field that you are and your aura are replenished from there. Okay? That is the, end, the exercise of the rose. That's all there is to it. But it's essential and I still do it on and off, even though most times I will tend to, you know, have more of a white light thing going on, as I described earlier, because I find that to be most effective to, you know, deal with things. I don't really like sending weird energies that have come to me back to their owners, because I don't see the point Then their owners are stuck with that stuff again, you know. Let me just trans transliterate <laughs> everything up into the white light as, as, far, as far as possible. But the definition of the space with the rose is still absolutely important to me. And I sometimes use it as a like a first aid kind of a kind of an approach when I always I say to my husband uh, when he's upset about something, I will say at one point or another, uh, stick a rose in there. You know, just meaning put a rose between you and the thing that is bothering you. Because even just doing that, if you really do it, if you get used to how that works for you, it'll help. It's uh, it's fantastic. It's a really great, uh, great way of doing it. I've experimented with different color roses sometimes to see what that does. And it's interesting. You know, there's ways and means and moments where orange roses are called for <laughs> and there are moments where white, white roses are the only uh, ones that will work you know so on and so forth so that is the aura cleanser basically with the help of the rose where you uh you learn also it's a really good beginner's exercise so you can you know learn what feels like okay at first you if you just ask for this energy to be out of your system you can see sometimes that it actually leaves you and that it makes more room around you, that you feel this is the how this works. All of this works only with how you feel, how you actually feel afterwards. If you do not feel any different, then you didn't do it right. <laughs> You're supposed to feel moderately to quite a bit different afterwards. And, you know, the different being as in I have more room, I feel freer in movement. I, it's easier. You know, things are easier. Uh, I, I'm not so hung up about things, and so on and so forth. Those kinds of ideas are what you're looking for here. So, um, from there on out, I have done this and the white light practice, as well as the other, you know, the Kundalini things. Uh, for a number of years now in different, you know, I used to do loads more white light only and recently it's been more Kundalini and Tumo things that I've been doing. And now I am into a setup apparently where past lives are all of a sudden uh, coming back to me more. And I have... Um, recently, I've also posted about this, um, watched videos that were made for me about past lives and past life contracts with people or soul contracts with people, in particular about a soul contract with my mother. And I have stuff that I want to share about that, which I will share as those videos become publicly available in the near future. 
and we will get back to that because it's all fascinating to me, of course. <laughs> but a lot of that is personal to me, which is okay and fine to share, which is a, but it's a different wavelength from what I'm doing today, which is giving you as much as possible, as, as much as I can, the vibrational frameworks, okay, for how uh, the approaches, the, the energy work approaches, the meditation approaches, whatever you like to call them. To, so as to, you know, for, what, for whatever good it may do, you know, because I find this stuff to be utterly priceless. If I hadn't had this, I would have gone completely nuts, completely off the bend. I would have been so, I, I wouldn't be here anymore if I hadn't turned 180 in my life and decided to work mainly on my own weirdness you know and my weirdness needed sorting out because there was so much misery in there and so much fragmentation so much things falling apart so much loss of agency that's you know those are the reasons why i am here why i'm i do these things why my vibrational stuff is so important to me so i noticed what was doing a bit of you know a, a moderate white light exercise just in the field around me after a little while I noticed that there is a uh, blockage in the earth line again um, this is I think last week or so it took me a while to get around to uh, I actually did another white light session uh, a week more than a week ago ten days ago or so where there was this more or less similar kind of energy so this is a long-term process with this particular energy being there it is an energy that has everything to do with my mother again so sorry for that if you're bored with me about my mother please go watch something else now <laughs> because oh I feel at some point also that myself that I am done talking about this but not quite yet I notice uh changes in this character this uh this nature of this energy and it is much harder because I am more connected to get rid of this blockage here and I also noticed like yesterday evening when I was into this for the second time really that I um, I needed to keep the connection to some extent but I wanted and this is where it gets kind of interesting again vibrationally you know um i wanted the charge to be gone the charge of whatever pattern whatever actual energy charge was there that i wanted to be gone but i did not want the information to be gone so the information the memories if you like of the connections I want to still be able to visit and what happens is that I get this there is this blockage in my underneath my earth star actually my earth star is sitting right on top of this and this is the surface of the earth right there okay earth star chakra and underneath there's this whole area where all of a sudden it feels like my very own mother is sitting in there herself <laughs> yikes <laughs> and what with white light coming in there which i remind you is impersonal so it will take care of her very gently very uh lovingly you know take her up into itself and i have seen her go into the white light a number of times already okay so there that's why i'm talking about charge here because there are apparently in this particular kind of a weird difficult connection there are several charges in each time what you do is you revisit things for yourself and you reinvestigate and you go a level deeper basically and your experience is different my experience is different each time but I have seen my mother down there a few times already and I'm afraid that I don't think she will be completely I am trying to just get rid of as much of the charge as possible and I'm not completely sure it's possible to get rid of the charge without also getting rid of all the information but I'm trying 
<laughs> I'm trying for the white light to leave an awareness of the pattern because I want to learn from it. I think it's important enough for me to, I have still stuff to learn in there. What the weird thing is that what I keep seeing is that I am standing here, okay? There's my earth line going down. There's the earth star chakra. There's the area that my mom is in. And then what you get, if you look at it from the side, like so, it feels like this lump of energy that is my mother, or what a part of her anyway, a part of her grounding, a part of her Shakti energy that used to be that remained in the earth for some reason, identifiable as such by me only, question mark, question mark, you know, and so on and so forth. This uh, lump of energy actually has a channel going s sort of off to a more um, towards a horizontal line. It's not like from her position onward in a horizontal line. It goes down at a gradient and then levels out. And this whole channel is filled with past lives information. Actual, as far as I can see, I don't really see all that much. And a lot of what I'm seeing is influenced by Jennifer Pearson's art history imagery, I'm afraid. <laughs> Which makes me go, yeah, like, e -e. that's why I don't have that deck, because it's so easy to mess with your brain. Um, there are areas, lamp lit areas with what looks like oil lamps, stone walls, and yes, there's a lot of Middle Eastern, Indian kind of stuff in there. But it is, as I stand here and talk to you about this, it is very much all my mother's vibe. And I haven't really found a crossroads yet because I haven't visited that hill. And I was just first coming out to talk to you about this stuff. It is what I'm doing, basically getting back to myself here, is I decided at the point yesterday evening in my session here, I decided that I first wanted to get rid of most of the charge because there's a push and there's a clinginess. There is a... That's what makes this blockage, is that she wants to, you know, be with me. And what's to be, she wants to look out for me. That's what she wants, really. The she that is down there, that is sort of a remnant, if you like, a ghost, if you like, of my mother, in a way. I wanted to get rid of the pressure and of the neediness both ways. Because I, a part of me also, wants her to stick around, I think. And to just see the patterns. And in order for me to do that, I had to make a decision. I had to decide, okay, so you are going to be white-lighted as much as possible. And I am going to choose to re-ground myself. So, tailbone, air star, heart of the earth. And I actually had to wriggle my way in my consciousness past this whole area that she is so involved with. And she's so whatever she really means at this point, you know, I am this I'm open to this connection. And what happens is that this connection overwhelms that part of me down there. So I had to wriggle. I had to decide, no, 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 we're going to get grounded first. Because this is me. This is who has to do the work. I have to get my shop organized here. If I know what I'm doing, I can make videos. I can talk to you guys. I can tell the story. I have a, a, a cogent, cohesive kind of a thing to, to be doing here. And from there on out, we can look at the patterns and see whether there's anything interesting to learn along this past lives kind of an adventure that seems to be happening down there. And um, I was, I remember one other thing is that when, as I was deciding to choose to ground myself and to not immediately go fly off into the 
second century BC to find her, you know, and to find these crossroads and find these connections with her, I realized that there was probably going to be a whole lot more pain there. And I was actually so scared of the pain, which is what, it, what, what being close to my mother means to me, always. It means pain. So <laughs> I'm actually rather glad I decided to, first of all, back out, ground properly, have a heart of the earth connection, sleep proper, properly, you know, have a proper long sleep. Uh, have breakfast, have nani na, and chill out, and don't do, I'm not going to do the hoovering today, because I can't stand the, the noise, you know, not today, not with all this stuff going on, there's more stuff, and there's more other, you know, things going on at, the ta at this moment, uh, times are complicated, we're in the middle of still probably what looks like a second COVID uh, experience, you know, the lot of us, and, um, Everybody's kind of worried that there's going to be more lockdown stuff going on, which I think, yeah, I'm not really expecting, but it's, you know, it's complicated. So we have to do also the living today, what's, you know, what's expected of us. So one other thing that's expected of me is my husband called already twice during this uh, second video here. I'm going to call him back right now because it's his lunch break and it's easiest. Um, this is as far as I got with my energy work operations so far and it was actually so it took me an hour and a half to do a bit of a general presentation I hope you find that int of interest uh, somehow or other uh, maybe there's only a, you know a, 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 an aspect to this that's interesting to you but I am very dedicated very serious about these things because I found them to be uh, it creates a a first aid, even, uh, kind of a network of approaches and, and things that I can do that make me, uh, that make me, that allow me to cope um, much better inside, also in here, which isn't, which isn't completely, um, you know, it's not like it's, uh, <laughs> it's not like it's always easy. So, yeah. So there you go. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching and I will... Um, I will be back eventually with uh, more intel. If I have more past lives intel, you're the first to know it, okay? So have a nice weekend and uh, I'll be seeing you again soon enough, okay? Ciao for now.